So we've got our brisket on the keg, got some time to actually talk about how to cook these things. There's a million and one different ways you can do brisket. There's all kinds of oddball rules and conversations you can have with brisket. Two, well, one, one big one is, are you cooking fat cap up or fat cap down on the brisket? There's two schools of thought. If you go fat cap up, the theory is that the fat melts gradually and dissipates through the brisket. Fat cap down, you're actually protecting the bottom of the brisket from getting scorched by uh, the charcoal underneath. It's at a low enough temperature where that doesn't really come into play. Uh, I'm not the guy to settle this argument. They both work well. I've tried them both ways. Take your pick. So let's think about just cooking anything for a long time, be it brisket, pulled pork, uh, even ribs to an extent. You might get out to five, six hours on ribs, but if you're cooking something for eight, 10, 12 hours, longer than that, it's not a bad guideline to use an hour per pound. At lower temperatures, an hour per pound will get you into a range where you can certainly tell, begin to tell if it's cooking properly. You may have to go, if you're at 12 hours, you may have to go to 14 hours. You're not changing the temperature too much, you're just increasing the time that it's cooking for. Your best friend when it comes to actually telling if something's done on the broken keg is a good probe thermometer. We'll get into that in a little bit more detail once we're back in the test kitchen. But guidelines to work with here on brisket, you want to be at least 190 degrees, maybe even as high as 200, 205 degrees. One thing to think about when you're cooking the brisket, and you'll see this if you watch the internal temperature that comes up while you're cooking, it's called the stall. So what happens when you're cooking is your internal temperature just comes up gradually over time. But you'll get to about 160 degrees Fahrenheit internal temp and it just stays flat, it plateaus. What's happening where the internal temperature plateaus like that is you're cooking moisture out of the brisket. So as this moisture is leaving, it's like a tipping point for it. The moisture is leaving the brisket and taking with it a lot of heat. If you have your temperature at 225 for a brisket and you try to jack the temperature up to 275, 300 degrees Fahrenheit, the result that you get isn't going to be as good if you wait it out and just let the cooking process take care of it. Once you get to that temperature, 195, 200 degrees, what you want to do, have some foil ready, take your brisket off the smoker, wrap it in foil, throw it in an oven, uh, a cooler, throw some towels over top of it, and old beach towels work well for this. You want it to be clean, doesn't have to, and I wouldn't make it something you're attached to necessarily, but uh, you want to keep that heat in the brisket, but you don't want to have a heat source necessarily. You want it to just stay at that temperature, it kind of mellows the whole process. The brisket relaxes nicely, and then you're ready to eat. So we're about 12 hours in, our brisket is looking good. We're ready to go. So we're gonna take the brisket off, get it on our cutting board carefully here. I got a good feeling about this one. Oh, if you guys could smell that, man. So between our super flipper and our tongs, I can finesse this guy right under the board. Look at that, nice. Nice crust on the outside. You can see that it is nice and tender there. That is gonna be good. Let's wrap this guy up and head back into the kitchen. We'll get it ready to serve. 